In the world of British comedy, there aren't many bigger fish than Amanda Iannucci. In a moment, we'll be speaking to the man behind some of the best-known and funniest satires of our time, including the day-to-day -day and the thick of it. But first, here's the character he helped create 20 years ago, Alan Partridge, who is back in the film Alpha Papa. Now, are you on any medication? Uh, just some cream. Uh, I've got very aggressive athlete's foot, but that's the only thing about me that is. And do you suffer from any nervous conditions, such as panic attacks? <laughs> Do I look like I suffer from panic attacks? I've had one panic attack in a car wash. It was a perfect storm of no sleep, uh, no wife, and angry brushes whirring towards me. Um, by the time the giant hairdryer came on, I was in the footwell. Steve Coogan first played Alan Partridge in the early 1990s in the radio show On The Hour and the mock TV news programme The Day Today. They helped There's establish Amanda Yunucci as one of our best comedy writers and producers. Many, many people who have appeared here in front of you uh, have leaked, but they've just lied about it to you. More recently, he's won huge acclaim for devising and directing political satire, The Thick of It, and its film spin-off, In the Loop, the lines often blurring between comedy and the reality of our government. Do you actually believe in me? Do you believe in you? Because I can't see any fire in your eyes. I can't even see the clicking of the, of the pilot light. And he's taken that idea across the pond with Veep, an Emmy-nominated comedy about a fictional US vice president. A far cry from Norwich-dwelling Alan Partridge. Armando, um, when it comes to moving something from the small screen, which is a rip-roaring success there, I mean, history tells us that moving onto the big screen is an extremely dangerous process. And yet, this morning, four stars in virtually every, every paper, five and a couple. So it's worked, but why? I think the mistake that's happened in the past when people have transferred television shows to film is that they've thought, it's a film, therefore it's got to be big, it's got to be brash, it's got to have loud noises and chases, and everything that you've enjoyed in the TV show has got to be uh, 100 times bigger than the film. I think that's the mistake. A lot of the best films can be really intimate pieces. I mean, if my favourite film director is Woody Allen. Uh, and he wouldn't be described as a big, brash film director. A lot of his pieces are just set in interiors and exteriors of New York. Did if you it's... have to do anything to Alan Partridge to move him onto the big screen? Uh, no, I think, uh, I mean, Steve specially grew his own paunch to fill <laughs> Alan's uh, shirts. And um, we gave him a look that is slightly 2005 Top Gear presenter. Because uh -huh. we thought that was Alan's uh, favourite um, style. But Partridge is a simply dreadful character. I'm a horrible well, thank you very much. No, no, but I mean, <laughs> but we like him. I mean, and we enjoy him. Well, there's also that, and we've also been very careful over the years to give him that element of humanity. You, you, you kind of feel for him, and he is fairly thick-skinned, so therefore he doesn't see himself the way other people see him. But in the truest way, it is tragic comedy. Well, I think there's a bit of hope and a bit of... There's a, there's a, there's a lot a of sadness. Of um, He's a sad git. Yeah, but it's sadness is funny, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know. You, <laughs> you seem to find it funny. You know, I, I, actually, I think this I'm a show would be a lot better. This show would be a lot better if there was a laughter track under it from beginning to end. I think you'd get more <laughs> viewers. And actually, people would take in more as well, actually. Well, that is the problem with you and interviewing <laughs> you too, because anybody who comes across you must think... Maybe I'll find myself staggering into one of his awful, tragic, comedy, comedy <laughs> extremely funny shows. Well, no, I think it's... I mean, I always... Um, I always laugh about the things that I enjoy or that I'm interested in. So I am, for example, fundamentally interested in politics. Talking of politics, has Coalition robbed yeah. you of, of the kind of rich scenes that Labour at war, Labour in banking crises and the rest provided you? Uh, I, I think I think there's 101 glorious scenes going on in Number 10 every day because we have these two factions, uh, one of which is three times the size of the other, trying to get through every day, trying to keep everyone on board, while at the same time trying to put out completely opposite public positions in order to appease their own support. But there and are events which outstrip even you. One, one thinks of Plebgate. Could you have written Plebgate? No, because if we had, we'd have we'd have been criticised for coming up with a very, very simplistic farce. I mean, who'd have thought that someone just riding a bike out of, number t <laughs> out of Downing Street would get half the police arrested? And what about any other arena in, in 
the sort of socio-economic life of the country. Are you going to go to the royal family? What about a baby? I mean, how do you deal with the baby? You've missed the baby. You've been on holiday. But the baby has ruled the world for the last five days. George. Don't tell me what sex it is, because I've taped it. And, uh, <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't want to know. <laughs> Amanda Yanucci, that's a good moment to say thank you very much. Thank you. And if you want to see any more of that interview, there's plenty of it, go to our website, channel4.com forward slash news.